welcome to After the Epilogue, a book podcast. From our yearly reading wrap-ups to our opinions on popular books, we talk about everything and anything book-related. So if you're a reader like us, make sure to stay tuned. I'm Maya. I'm Maddie. <laughs> and today we are discussing which book talk book is the best. Very controversial topic. Yes. Um, we're doing a little bracket that we'll have right up here somewhere. somewhere. You know, in, in on the screen. You see it. Um, the problem is, I have not been on Book Talk very long. And so, my knowledge of Book Talk books is very limited. Which is why the books on the bracket are the books on the bracket. Because they're the ones we've both read. We also did not include The Song of Achilles because it would have just easily won. Yes. We have too much bias for that book. So. Yes. Also, the order they are on the bracket was selected by a random number selector, so we did not purposefully place them against the ones we did. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start in the corner with the fine print and red, white, and royal blue. So the fine print. I really liked the tropes, most of them. I didn't like the, the boss Mm-hmm. like trope where like you fall in love with your boss i didn't like the workplace romance i did like the enemies to lovers the shun- mm-hmm. sunshine and grumpy yes the um daddy issues mm-hmm. <laughs> what about you yeah no i think i think you covered it that was the best part um i didn't appreciate the branding references oh um for those who like, don't get it yeah. Um, <laughs> we're talking like cattle branding. Yeah. Um, references were made towards that, and it was explicit. Uncomfy. It was very uncomfy. Yeah. I also didn't like how um, you didn't really get to see the relationship form as much as I would have mm-hmm. liked to. It was kind of just like a hardcore romance book. It yes. was teetering on the edge of taboo, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. They were, like, automatically just attracted to each yeah. other. And it was just like, you're hot. It's like the second he saw her. And now we're going to randomly make out. And I was like, whoa. It was a good book. Don't get us wrong. Yeah, it was good. It was just a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. And it's not really my cup of tea. Me neither. Okay, next up is Red, White, and Royal Blue. That was my cup of tea. Yeah, we 100%. Don't have my <laughs> it had um, and a good representation. Yep. A cute little banter. It was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, this is has the same problem with at first. You don't get to see the relationship mm-hmm. kind of form. You kind of just see this attraction. Mm-hmm. And then, well, at least on Henry's side. Yeah. And then it kind of, you get to see the relationship develop and see why they made the attraction, like the physical attraction first and then the emotional mm-hmm. connection. And it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um. It was well done. It was very... I feel like the difference between this one, these two, is the fine print is, like, hardcore. (laughs) Um, Red, white, and royal blue is definitely softer and... Yeah, like a a fluffy romance book. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I think red, white, and royal blue wins by far. If we're talking about what helped America grow (laughs) as a literature... What helped American literature grow... (laughs) <laughs> what advanced America more? <laughs> Red, white, and royal blue. What was a better book? Red, white, and royal blue. I feel like in all aspects, it was just better. Yeah. Except for the ending. If I were to say which ending was better, it'd be the fine print. I don't even... Oh, yeah. I do remember the yeah. ending to the fine print. I agree. The red, white, and royal blue ending was just so disappointing for the quality of the book. It didn't give anyone any closure. No. And I feel like, especially since it was a fluffy book, there should have been some closure. Yes. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it wins and it advances. Woo! Yay. Now we're gonna go down. We have the Cruel Prince versus Heartstopper. Okay, I'm gonna fight my butt off for this one. <laughs> but we all know what we're not getting. What anywhere. advanced the American <laughs> literature more, or just all literature? Okay, so <laughs> the Cruel Prince. It is such a good book that I promise you has gotten probably hundreds of people into reading. And, okay, you can't say I'm wrong because I have proof. I have proof that you It's a very good beginner's book, and I 
know from experience from the people I've known who read it besides Maya, okay, they they read this book and they realize that books can be entertaining and they can be an escape and it can help you and kind of be a coping mechanism and it can be fun to read. Aww. It's also very easy, an easy read mainly if you like fantasy. Um, and of course it has, in my opinion, very good world building. You kind of, you see these names and these new kingdoms and you feel like you're submerged into the world. It also has a beautiful map and a beautiful love story that's dragged across three books and that you know I love my slow burns. And it's enemies to lovers. And it is feminism. <laughs> Woo! Go women! And there's a strong female main character, okay? Woo! Cons, do you want to start off with cons? It wasn't the book for me. I read it at the wrong time. I was too busy. I didn't dedicate the time to it. But I definitely didn't get into reading because of it. If anything, it pushed me away from wanting to read books for a good while. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> it was just such an awful experience trying to read it. Um, I did not enjoy it at But, like, all. why didn't you enjoy it? Again, it was just the wrong time. Like, I didn't care enough for it. Uh-huh. And it didn't make me want to care. Um, there is no actual reason. Which is why, like, mm. I have a very biased opinion. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel a good book, if you are going to get all the way through it, which I did actually get all the way through it, there should be some, like, actual thing keeping you going. And it didn't do that for me. For me, the thing keeping me going was the politics. I enjoyed every single second of these like humans versus this magical creature. Yeah. I just I really liked how she was trying to prove herself to them. Yeah. And prove yeah. that she could be better. I also really I quote it a lot, which is surprising. Um, there's one quote, I don't know if it's from the Cruel Prince, but I know it's from the series. No it is. She goes, If I cannot be better than them, I will be so much worse. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. And I probably have bias towards liking it more because I'm in love with her. So Real, yeah. <laughs> I think if I did reread it, I would enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. It was just like, I was very busy. I didn't make the time for it. I didn't care for it. And so I was just trying to get through it. Um, but Real cons for this book, like seeing it as an ob- objective thing, it didn't really advance society very much. You know, it's like, it's a fantasy book. It's more of a have fun. It's a cute little... You know, not really cute, but it's like a good book. Mm -hmm. I need to stop talking with my hands. Um, uh, Another thing, it's not like the most intricate writing. Mm -hmm. It's, like I said, it's an easy book to get into. So it wasn't like beautifully written like the Song of Achilles or anything. The only aspects it really has going for it is... (laughs) It's a good YA fantasy, you know? Woo! Okay. Yeah. Next. It's going against Heartstopper. That's a hard One That's a beat. hard book to be. Yeah. I mean, you got good representation. I feel in advanced society. It did its job. It's it's a cute little happy story that people need. Um Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there isn't much more to it. The characters are great. You have this whole amazing little friend group that are just, like, the sweetest things ever. Um, very fluffy. Very fluffy, very happy. And that's the point. Um, it covers a lot of good topics with a happy tone that shows there's light to the end of the tunnel um, on a lot of real topics, and it's very necessary for teens and younger audiences. I agree. Um, I was kind of quiet during that because I was trying to think of cons. <laughs> and I, I'm i genuinely, like, I have so much bias. I think I've allowed myself to completely block out everything that I objectively yeah. is wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it's a graphic novel, I guess. So it's not really a book. No. Technically. Yeah. So but that's can con. We put it on the bracket so I don't feel we can disqualify it. Um... Cons. Oh, God. 
the fandom can be a little weird sometimes. But that's not the book's fault. Okay, but it has a lot of fanfare. Ma- because it's so good. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was made in what, like 2012? <laughs> not 2012. It was set in 2012. That's a con. Yeah. <laughs> because when, like Tumblr and. I kind of wish it would have been exist. set in modern times because I feel like it would have had more of an impact. Yeah, it has to go forward. But yeah. I'm just saying, this is unfair. The Hunger Games versus They Both Die in the End. Now, The Hunger Games is only discussing, like, The Hunger Games, not Catching Fire and Mocking Jay. Because if Catching Fire was included, uh, there's too much, too many good aspects of that book. This isn't really a hard one, but... Not at all. Let's cover Hunger Games first. Hunger Games, like we've talked about earlier episodes, it's got everything you ever wanted. Mm-hmm. It's a very good book that many, probably thousands of readers have made Then their transition. <laughs> like, the book where they've realized that book reading is fun. Like Got an indoor about reading, yeah. Yes. Um, it's got all the tropes, it's got the romance, it's got the world building. Incredible world building. Yeah, a lot better. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Um, and it's kind of just a classic, you know? Yeah. If you say The Hunger Games, people are going to know what you're talking about. It's one of those, like, I think there's, like, the top three book series from its time, and that's, like, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Percy Jackson. Those mm-hmm. are iconic book series that will go... I don't know, in history, but will They're last also very forever. Timeless. Yes. yes, they are very timeless. Because the issues described mm-hmm. are just timeless issues, like, since the start of time. Mm-hmm. Um, the middle gap, the working class... Um, mm-hmm. Politics. Just, yeah, politics. And they got good characters. I think you do get better characters as the series goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, Catching Fire is a like, big part of that, because that's when you'll see the characters that carry on to, like, Mockingjay, but in the end, like, it's an incredible book, and it deserves the hype. I agree. Yeah. Cons. Oh, (sighs) God. I don't, I don't know if there are too many cons. I feel it was a good book. It's, it was good for the time it was released. It is good for the future. Gail. (laughs) <laughs> you can't say one That's character. That's a con. You can't say a character is supposed to per- be perceived that way as a con. Well, first of all, he's not supposed to be perceived that way in the first book, and we're talking about the first book. But it's for development. You can't just... I don't like Gale. <laughs> um, I do. This is, like, one of the only times where I think a love triangle is acceptable. Um, fight with me on this if you want, but... Gale symbolizes war and Katniss mm-hmm. having to fight and, like, being forced to fight for her mm-hmm. life and um, providing for her family. And then PETA represents peace and, like, calmness and something that Katniss has needed and strived for in her life. But with Gale, she'll never be able to get that. Yeah. So, But yeah. also, is that overly developed into the later two books? You know what? <laughs> yes, I say it is because Peta's the bread giver and Gil's the person who wants to run away and fight. So that's in the first book. I'm, I'm aware. Fight me I over. read that. Fight me I read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's going up against They Both Die at the End. Um, they Both Die at the End, it's a good book. It makes you think about life and death and kind of what you would do in that situation. The author does a really good job of helping you accept the deaths of Mateo and Rufus as they're trying to accept their own deaths. Um, That's the- a controversial opinion because me personally, have I have not accepted that death. Well, you were supposed to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ending was really good. Ugh, the ending was great. Um, I really like the, um, I think it was the last line, where yeah. he says... And I crossed the street without an arm to hold me back. It kind of just had that, you know how English teachers are like, thesis in the intro and then wrap it back in the conclusion. It had that, which is so Mm -hmm. satisfying for a reader. Yeah. Honestly, the ending was 
I've had a kid. lot of hate for this book on Book Talk, though. And I, I don't think it deserves a lot of hate. But for a book that takes place in a day, they really milked it. Same thing with, like, I think one of the reasons they get so much hate, besides the fact that it's long for being in a day, and it's, like, the longest day you've ever seen in your entire life, mm-hmm. um, especially when they're, like, complaining about not having time left, you're like, well, there are still 200 pages. <laughs> um, but I think for a day, you don't have too much time to develop a relationship, and I think that is why... He tries to do a lot in a day, and you can't do all that much. So I do realize where the hate comes from. But at the same time, like, the concept of the book, what are you going to do? Yeah. So, like, con, the relationship isn't really developed. Yeah. But also, question, was that really the point of the book? For the relationship to be developed? Because I feel like nope. it was supposed to be dead ends. Yeah. It's supposed to make you think about what could have been. Yes, you are, you're rushing, and you're making the most out of the day that you have. And sometimes that ends up bringing in new scenarios that you would have never thought to experience, and then it, you die. Yeah. I think another, um, another thing I can't really get because of this bias you have when reading, which people don't talk about this a lot, but books have a lot of bias in people's opinions in them. That didn't make any sense. Yeah. People's I think everybody has bias don't have a lot on of bias. everything. That's true. Um, my bias in this book is you talk about it being kind of like dragged on, mm-hmm. milking it for a day, but I read it in a day. Like I read it yeah. one night, yeah. so it didn't feel very long mm-hmm. to me. And so that's why I can't say, oh, it was dragged on, it was dragged on, because I feel like if you read it in a night, yeah. you're like, oh, it's over. That's sad. Yeah, yeah, I, I think get that. another... Another reason this book gets a lot of hate is because it ends sad. And people <laughs> unconsciously hate books that don't end happily. That's so Because true. you're like, oh, I didn't get that wraparound. Mm-hmm. I didn't get that satisfying ending. Um, For me, the ending was so satisfying. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, they're both dead. <laughs> That's how it said it in the cover. Come on. Yeah. I think another thing like they get hate is why would you spoil the ending in the title? Uh-huh. But that's the point. Like... It's the con- the concept of the book itself was so well done mm-hmm. because it adds all those questions. Why would you do that? What would you do in the scenario? Um, and I think the concept is great. I think I think with the, he did very good in the world building aspect. Yes, because I could yes. see this happening. You yes. know, I could see you, especially modern day, getting a call and being like, "Hey, you're gonna die today." Yeah, and as certain as you may think it is in that moment you would not think that was true you'd mm-hmm. think how am i gonna die i'm perfectly fine mm-hmm. and like the whole thing where like you can make friends with yeah. like the people dying it and sounds very you could go have realistic. these like end of your life experiences go on these tra- like it's all very much things that would happen in america it's all things that, like... Especially the fake skydiving. Yes! That is... Yes. When I read that, I was like, okay, yeah, this is real. Yep. This is gonna yep. happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the writing could have been refined. Yeah. But it, the concept is great. I think Hunger Games has a little more literary merit. Yeah. That's a better way to put it's it. It's a little... Not advancing society. <laughs> it's a little more significant and... And I know we just said it didn't overly advance society, but the concepts are those that, like, need to be taught and need to be shown to these younger audiences. Um, And it's a good way of doing that. Isn't Hunger Games on the banned books now? There are a lot of books on the banned book list. Uh, Let's end that, please. Thank you. Please. To all the government officials watching her Honestly, They Will Die at the End probably is on some banned book list, oh, yeah. too, because... 100%. <sighs> Anyways, I think it's pretty clear the victor, the Hunger Games. Yeah. Um, who can hate it? Who can live without it? Certainly May the odds be ever in your favor to the Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs>
Moving on from the bracket, we have We Were Liars versus Solitaire. Now, I think this is an interesting matchup because it's two books that are kind of on an even playing field. They aren't I see. overly great. Like, compared to the other ones, like, I feel there were clear winners yeah. in our past brackets. The only one that might have been close was The Cruel Prince, but... Eh. Honestly, my preferred winner might surprise you for this. For this one? I feel like I've changed my opinion after just mulling it over in my no, head. No, I... Don't get me wrong. Hmm. Actually... I'm about to get you wrong. Which one are we talking about first? <laughs> Let's talk about We Were Liars, pros and okay. cons. Let's not reveal anything. We Were Liars was the first book I ever threw cl- across the room. I hated that ending. As a little, like, sixth grader who couldn't handle books being sad ever and lying to me... Again, it was in the title! Why did I? Yeah. Mm. They will die at the end is one of those that's like straightforward. They're telling you they're gonna die at the end. This we is were liars. Doesn't tell you why they are liars. It is foreshadowing, but you don't realize it. And so that annoyed me. And so I threw it across the room. But it was really good. And really, the way they did it was smart. And it was sneaky. I. Mm. I know this book gets a lot of hate. I don't really remember. Oh my, this is, besides, I'm not on book talk. Any Coho, this is the most hated book. Um, Wow. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that. But when I first read it, and I read that ending, I cried my eyes out like a little baby. And again, bias. So when I finished reading We Were Liars for the first time, I cried my eyes out like a little baby. And circling back to book bias it was because i had spent the entire day reading that book yeah. so i it was what like 5 a.m at night and i was sleep deprived and i was mm. angry and i was mad yeah real bias we were liars um i think my saddest part was like the dogs dying oh my god also i don't like books lying to me don't do me like that Anyway, Um, I have a love-hate relationship with We Were Liars, simply because the plot twist um, and the pain it caused me. But it was well-written. It was well done. Was it well-written? I feel... Okay, again, I was a sixth grader. I don't remember. Okay, so in my my opinion, um, it's definitely suited for, like, younger readers, like sixth grader... Not, like, elementary school, for mm-hmm. sure, but, like, s- middle school. Yeah. Um, because the writing on every single book on this list, I feel like We Were Liars had the worst writing. Um, it wasn't hard to understand, and it kind of skipped around. It was just meh. Like, it, you got the point across, yeah, but it wasn't that good. And when did you read it? Hmm. Probably... Eighth grade? Okay. Yeah. So you've read it more recently. Yeah. You? Um, Your brain was I a first, little more developed. <laughs> when I first read it, I liked it. And I, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that, that was a really good book. I hated it for being sad, but I liked it. And so I went to the thrift store, and I found a book by her, E. Mm-hmm. Lockhart. And I read it, and it was the most horrendous book I've ever read. Like, it was terrible i think it was one of her first books and you could see why it was like 50 cents at the thrift store Mm -hmm. it it did not advance my brain it did not (laughs) that book make me think it did yeah it did not make my um it did not make me feel anything yeah i felt annoyed i don't think it overly advanced society or had any literary merit yeah but I do think it kind of did make you think, you know? Yeah. It made... Made me know what distrust mm-hmm. felt like. Yeah. Um, deeper meanings, I'm trying to think. Be a better person. I feel like that's a deeper meaning. Yeah. They both die at the end. Uh, if you had to do it again, would you do it better? Would you mm. be a better person? So maybe some of that. Just trying to get deep here. We're really reaching. Yeah, we are <laughs> reaching. But... Yeah. I mean, Yeah. Solid. Moving on from solid to solitaire. Um, I didn't really read this book. I read it on... I did read it, but I okay. audio booked it. Okay, it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. It was... I was like, what? Kind of hard to follow at times, because mm-hmm. I read it via auto audiobook. 
I listened to it via audiobook. <laughs> um, but it was good. I liked it. I did read this one pretty recently, I think freshman year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I read it last year. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it was freshman year. Mine would have been It was before last Heartstopper year. came out. I think it would have been over the summer. Because mine was after Heartstopper came out. And Heartstopper came out, like, the last week of school. Yeah, one of the... Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I liked it, but it didn't really make me think. It made me think about how much I hated people. <laughs> I was just like, wow, these people suck. Yeah. I want to murder Maddie them. was like, I am Tori Spring now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, like, I do hate people now. I'm mm-hmm. going to become Tori Spring, which is not a healthy thing to think after finishing a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, not after finishing this book. Yeah. Where Tori's, like, definitely depressed and, like... Freshman year was a rough time, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Alice Wilson's debut novel when she was, like, 17. Which, I didn't know that. For that young, like, that's incredible. Mm, for that young, it's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> if you're it's gonna be a writer... Real. Real. It's not, like... The Outsiders, where it's revolutionary. Okay, yeah. The Outsiders is... That's different. The Outsiders is a book of literary merit. Yeah. Solitaire is not even close to being a book of literary merit. It's not well written. I read the unedited version, so I don't know if, like... I'm pretty sure the it's revised version, better, but it wasn't that good either. Yeah. I think it's on par with We Were Liars writing. Yes. Yeah. Definitely for youngish readers Mm -hmm. i would say if you're too impressionable do not read this yeah it could make you sad it can make you mad yeah um but like i say i like to rate books on how they make me feel things and solitaire definitely did make me feel Mm -hmm. as much as we were liars i don't think so i related to like too many of the characters in solitaire and yeah i i declared it my favorite book like with a Clockwork Orange for a good while. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is, like, such a funny little pairing at number one. But I really, really, really enjoyed Solitaire. (laughs) Maybe it's because freshman year, let's see, I I think I read the Song of Achilles freshman year too. Okay. So I well, I would have known what good literature was. <laughs> Whoa. I would have already read The Hunger Games. I would have already read Not the Cruel Prince. I read that recently ish. Um, I read The Hunger Games early, early. You read The Hunger Games and you rated Solitaire better than The Hunger Games? Did I? I didn't say that. You said. Solitaire and The Clockwork Orange were your two favorite books. Yeah, but, like, favorite doesn't mean, like, literary merit. But favorite, I feel like, means best, in your opinion. No. Best for me. Best in your opinion. No. Best for me. (laughs) (laughs) To me, favorite is a book that made me think, made me reflect on life. A book that I enjoyed... For good reason. But that doesn't mean that my favorite book I would recommend to you. Okay. Because I know, like, my favorite is, like, a book I would consume over and over again because, yes. See, when I think of my favorite, I think of what had the most impact on me. And if it's going to have an impact on me, it's going to have literary merit. Like Real. If I read a book that is has literary merit i'm gonna be like wow that was so good (laughs) because real you know yeah um the thing about solitaire though is i didn't care for it (laughs) i i read it and i was like oh that was cool you know like the this is about people are gonna want to kill me (laughs) um (laughs) damn it has no relevance to me real If we're not talking about Heartstopper. Yeah. Like, I... uh, I like the world they built um, with those characters and kind of mentioning those characters. And I feel like if we're talking 
about the entire world as a whole, I would be like, oh, for sure, it's better than We Were Liars. But Solitaire as an individual, not going in to the other characters' lives, only focusing on Tori's spring solitaire, you know, her her novel as the main character, I, I'm i going to vote for it to stay where it is. I would... I don't disagree. Mm-hmm. Because I do think We Were Liars has more thinking points. I think Solitaire was... I think it goes back to that personal bias. Solitaire was a book I needed at, like, the time I read it. Yeah. Um, which is why it made my top two, because it was, like, so special to me, whereas On the Stage with a Clockwork Orange, Clockwork Orange was one of those books of literary merit, mm-hmm. and I felt so passionate towards that book because of its impact on society. But I see. I would also like to point out that though, like you said... It only has relevance to you when talking about Heartstopper. Solitaire created that world. Yeah. Solitaire created those characters. But it didn't characters. expand on that world. But it did later. But, and but we're not talking about later. I know. We're talking about I know, Solitaire. Which is why I think We Were Liars should advance. But I think it is important to note Solitaire's importance in That's what I'm saying. It only universe. has relevance to me. In, in hearts, terms. That, yeah. See? It's still a good standalone. It's an intro part. Intro point for what would become one of the most impactful yeah. uh, worlds, AUs. It's not an AU, it's... It's a world. Okay. The Ozmanverse. Ozman would become the most impactful book, one of the most impactful book, like, universes, universes. to me. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to stay past my bias, and it really does, it hurts me to move on We Were Liars. I'm not going to say uh, this me was too. <laughs> Especially because it's Alice Oseman, but I have to. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah. I am sorry. Like, I'm not I'm not saying that, like, sarcastically. Yeah. I am not happy with this decision, but it is the right decision. <sighs> Sadly. Because personal bias does not make a book the best book talk book. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about the best book talk book. That is the argument at hand. Okay, now we have a hard one. <laughs> Let's go back to the other side of the bracket. We have Red, White, and Royal Blue against Heartstopper. So we're bringing back Alice Oseman because she deserves to be up there, as always. <sighs> ah! <laughs> now, because we've already established our opinions on these, we can kind of just go one-on-one. Yeah. Who's going to make it? This really hurts me. It like it pains me yeah. to compare them. Yeah. This side is so much harder than the other oh side of the bracket. This isn't fair. Oh Red, God. white, and royal blue and Heartstopper both have great representation. Mm-hmm. They both cover it's a very fact. important points. I feel like they both have very deeper messages. Mm-hmm. They're both fluffy, mm-hmm. um, but one's a graphic novel. One's a book. One, you both. <laughs> We're not talking about impact here. We're talking about impact. The impact it would have on society yeah. as a whole. So we are talking about impact here. Not impact on us. I meant like yeah. our personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we are talking about impact. I'm but s- I think I, cut it short. I think both of these. Impacts society the same way they impact I think us. the only reason Heartstopper has a bigger impact in red, red, White, and Royal Blue right now is because Heartstopper is wider spread. You mm-hmm. know, it has a TV show. It has that fan yeah. base that is extremely s- strong. Uh, if Heartstopper and Red, White, and Royal Blue were s- decimated on, like, spread through... I don't, I don't Everybody. Yeah, yeah, if everyone had access to these two pieces of... Literature. Literature. Which one would have more of an impact? I think it's Red, White, and Royal Blue. Ooh, I disagree. Red, White, and Royal Blue, I think most of the criticism we read while discussing it was the fact that it really only pertained to an American audience. And while that American audience was crucial, Mm -hmm. and it's crucial to that American audience, um, especially we could relate to it a lot with the politics in Texas. Yeah. um, It was very important in that manner. But outside of America, 
it doesn't have that same significance. I mean, it still discusses, like, the mental health issues, but those are discussed in Heartstopper. It discusses family issues and homophobia, all of an internalized homophobia, all of stuff, again, discussed in Heartstopper. Well, here's the difference between Red, White, and Royal Blue and Heartstopper. You said that Red, White, and Royal Blue talks about politics. Heartstopper does not. Correct. But you just said that Red, White, and Royal Blue covers everything that's also in Heartstopper. I did, yes. But the politics only pertain to America, while Heartstopper spreads to kids. But I think the basic message of the politics pertains to everyone, that corruption is a real thing and that it's easy to influence voters or influence people to sway their opinion a certain way. I still gotta go hard stop Oh, her. God! <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck in the loop. Yeah! I just, I think the audience of Heartstopper needs it more than the audience of Red, White, and Royal Blue. Needs what more? The story that it's sharing. I think I think the main point of Heartstopper is that there are so... Like, it covers those hard topics that we discussed. Mm-hmm. It covers them, but with a happy light where teens and tweens can see there is a way out. And I think that is what a lot of them need when they're going through issues that are discussed in the novel. You bring up a good point. With the, there is a way out. But then again, another main point of Heartstopper is that there isn't really a way out. Like, mental illness will stay with you for the rest of your life. But there's there's that positive side of it is Uh kind of the point. Yeah. (laughs) So hard. I think that Red, White, and Royal Blue says the same thing. It, It shows that people with this mental illness can also be happy and they can overcome the injustices of the world. Sorry, my throat is itchy. If you see me drinking this a lot. This is so hard. Um, I think that Red, White, and Royal... Red, White, and Royal Blue was better written. I think it was better thought out. Um... I think that it's more organized. I think that their ideas are... Mm. I think the ideas portrayed are very similar, except Mm. one is in a novel form and one's a graphic novel. Mm. And I think that the reason Heartstopper... If Heartstopper were to go forward, I think that the reason Heartstopper would go forward is because it's more easily accessible. Mm. It's more easily um, consumed because you can... More people can relate to it. Well, no. <laughs> it's the same. Well, more people can consume it because it's a graphic novel. It doesn't take as much time, you know. It's easier to read. It's easy to get through. It's easy to get the ideas. But Red, White, and Royal Blue, you kind of have to reach for them. You have to pry for them. And I think maybe that's why Heartstopper comes on top. Because, first of all, it's one of those... It's, it's one of, like... It is a unique way of telling and portraying the messages that it's portraying Mm -hmm. and the fact that it has had such an impact I think automatically puts it above red white and royal blue and because of its graphic novel form and the accessibility of it I think that's a pull factor to having it ahead hurts me to put a graphic novel on the best book top hey. book but okay it was I on agree. the graphic it I was agree. on the bracket let's move Heartstopper forward to <laughs> there <laughs> sorry oh. <laughs> anyway hunger games or we were liars i easy. feel it's easy hunger, hunger games. games yeah <laughs> Hunger Games, it's crucial for the time period. It's crucial for the politics. You still get that, like, mistrust Mm -hmm. and the feeling of, like, an unhappy end in Hunger Games, if we're talking about the first one, because it's not over, you know? Um, But I think the only difference is that Hunger Games pulls it through Mm -hmm. in a trilogy. It expands those ideas, and you can relate more to it in the real world it has a greater impact in every single way. 
mm-hmm. the writing, the accessibility, everything. It's easier. I it's think better. Yes. I agree. Hunger Games moves forward. And now we discuss our final two. <clears throat> this is so easy. I would like to apologize. Oh, no. I think I made the wrong decision on the other side of the bracket. You think red, white, and royal blue should go forward now? <laughs> yeah. But. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a rough one to get through. It, that side was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah. Okay, but why? Why all of a sudden did but you change your I mind? But I disagree. I What? <laughs> why did Okay, let's okay. start with why you changed your mind and then talk it out and maybe you'll re- I think no, I think we should start with why I think my decision st- should stay. Okay. The impact it has made. Period. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's why we put it there. That's what the ultimate poll was. But at the same time, why I'm reconsidering everything? Mm-hmm. Like why? Why did, did the Hunger Games? Why did we even discuss cons? Because we were talking about the first one. <gasps> Nick oh. and Charlie don't even get together by the end of the first volume of Heartstopper. But it's also a volume, so it's not no, like it's a book. The same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, I know. That's we're so, talking about Heartstopper one here, which is tiny and not. It doesn't even cover like any mental illness. <laughs> it covers nothing. This is all built on a lie. But and I think it's the same thing as solitaire. Like it's the start of something. But yeah, no, yes. <laughs> move red, white, and royal blue forward. <laughs> Why? I really like I just pulled a we were liars right there. I just You made me mistrust <laughs> I <know>. people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That was so fun. <laughs> okay, well. I get it now. <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Red, white, and royal blue versus the Hunger Games. Maya confused me. Okay, I <laughs> want to state something before we move on. I'm kind of proud of that. Maya confused <laughs> me into thinking Heartstopper was the full thing. At first, I did only consider the first well, volume, see, but then I, I forgot to mention that, okay? I did too. No, I, I second that. Like, yeah. I forgot. And then I was like, oh, wait, Hunger Games is only the first one. Okay. We screwed up. Here we go. We both screwed up, and yeah. we sincerely apologize. For I don't this know if I apologize. I do. That was fun to talk about. <laughs> red, okay. white, and royal blue versus the Hunger Games. I think red, white, and royal blue has better characters. <laughs> <laughs> and I firmly believe that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that is a real, like, Maya's not even joking statement. <laughs> but she realizes how absurd it sounds. So, <laughs> I like Hamish and Rue, and that's about it. <laughs> In the first one, I really did only enjoy Hamish and Rue, so it didn't do much for me. I can't say I love Katniss, and we have said it before, Maya doesn't love Peta. It, I I think I would be murdered if I said I liked Gale. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't. I but just... it was an important character. They all symbolize something. Yeah, I'm Katniss aware. symbolizes the Mockingjay. Peta symbolizes peace. Gale symbolizes war. Rue symbolizes the lost children. And I, I'm, say, I'm aware what they symbolize. Yes, exactly. I'm just saying. So Red, white, and row blue, I enjoyed the game. <laughs> They that book was so mad at your terrible opinion it had to jump off a cliff. How do you feel? Do you think the characters are so much better? One hundred percent. I think thousand percent. I think the symbolism in Hunger Games, what makes it the literary <laughs> What makes it a book of literary merit <laughs> the purpose, everything. I think Hunger Games is better. But the actual characters in Red, White, and Royal Blue are better and more fun, and it's it's they're two they're two very different books. Hunger Games wins, okay? Yeah, Hunger Games wins. Thank you for listening to this episode of After the Epilogue. Check out After the Epilogue podcast on Instagram and After the Epilogue After Epilogue MM on Twitter, <laughs> and check out Maddie's TikTok. 
which we'll have them all typed out. But on our Twitter and Instagram, you can find updates and behind the scenes. After the Vlog is hosted and produced by Madeline Glenn and Maya Ortiz. Thank you. Thank you. I think I stared at the camera in shock for about six minutes. <laughs> <laughs>